choosing the right Google Ads bidding type and implementing a solid strategy for adjusting your bids is critical to driving your ad costs down. If you don't know what you're doing, you can end up wasting your entire budget on just a few clicks. But when you make the right moves, you can take your campaign performance to a whole new level. Just changing your bid strategies can lead to an increase in conversions of up to 100, 200, or even 300%. In this post, we're going to talk to you about all of the different types of Google Ads bidding strategies and how to use them to your advantage. When you're launching a new campaign on Google Ads, Google will ask you what type of bidding you want to use, automated or manual. Most people opt for automated because who wants to go and adjust bids all the time if you're running multiple campaigns? Unfortunately, it's not as simple as just choosing automated and starting to cash in on your checks from sales or conversions or really whatever your objective is. There's 11 different bidding strategies available and they all have their time and place. You have to be familiar with all of them if you wanna make the right informed decision. So as we said, there's 11 different types of bidding that you can use for a variety of goals. In this video, we're gonna break down each one and what its ideal use case is, including the new maximized conversion value option. We'll also cover a couple options that were recently made useless and what bidding strategy Google Ads made to replace both of these. So let's take a closer look at our options. First off, we've got the target cost per acquisition or TCPA bidding strategy. So target CPA is a strategy that you can use if you wanna optimize for conversions. If driving conversions are your primary goal for your campaign, selecting TCPA bidding will focus on trying to convert users at a specific acquisition cost. With this method, Google Ads will automatically set your bids on each campaign based on your CPA. While some conversions may cost more, others may cost less to even out and align with your conversion acquisition costs. Target bidding can be complicated if you don't know what your acquisition costs are or what they should be. Your cost per acquisition is simply the amount of money you can afford to spend on acquiring one new customer. For example, if you sell a product for 50, you don't want to set your CPA at 50. That would be breaking even when the goal is to profit. When selecting this bidding method, you can enter your target CPA and then you're good to go. Google Ads bidding option two, target return on ad spend. Target return on ad spend or TROAS is a bidding strategy that throws most of us for a loop and confuses people. Unfortunately, math is pretty important on this one and it's a bidding strategy where Google Ads will set your bids to maximize the conversion value based on the return on investment that you want from your ad spend. This number is percentage based. So you wanna generate $10 for every $2 that you spend. $10 in sales from the campaign divided by $2 in ad spend from your clicks times 100% is equal to 500% target ROAS. Easy enough, right? But here's what the target ROAS strategy looks like when you're creating a new campaign. If you're still not sure what to set as your percentage, you can navigate to a previous campaign on Google Ads and modify your columns. If you add the metric to your column that's called conversion value divided by cost or all conversion value divided by cost and use that number from your top performing campaigns, you can then set that number as your target ROAS. Now let's look at one of the most common and simplest automated bidding strategies on Google Ads, maximize conversions. Using the maximum daily budget that you set, Google will automatically run your bidding for you to get the most conversions for your money. For example, if your daily budget is $50, Google will spend it to find the most conversions within that $50. If a single conversion costs $50, Google won't bid on it for you. Before selecting this bidding method, be sure to check that your daily budget is at a reasonable level that you're willing to spend. And at the end of a campaign, check your return on investment to see if the conversions that you're maximizing for lead to profitable sales, not just sales at any cost. Using this strategy, you don't have to enter any details upon setup aside from your daily budget. Maximize conversion value. The maximize conversion value strategy was added in 2019 and it's the newest bidding strategy on the platform. It works essentially like target ROAS with the Google Ads algorithm trying to maximize the return on your ad spend. The difference here is that you don't have to specify a target ROI. You just let the algorithm try to maximize all of your ad spend to the best of its ability. Next up, we have enhanced cost per click. In a few words, this is a little bit of a hybrid bidding strategy. It's 
partially manual and it's partially smart algorithm driven bidding. You set the basic CPC for your ad groups and keywords, but the algorithm gets to optimize them. Google basically has the right to increase or decrease your bid based on the likelihood of driving the sale. Bids will try to be averaged out at your max cost per click settings. If a search is too competitive and the CPCs are way too high, Google can lower your bid to cost less due to the decreased chances of converting. If it's an easy steal by increasing bids, Google will make the call. This type of bidding is available on search and display, and you can choose whether you want the algorithm to enhance your bids based on a flat number of conversions or optimize for the actual value of the conversions. Next up, we have an old favorite, Maximize Clicks. So Maximize Clicks is an automatic bidding strategy based on your maximum daily budget. A lot of people go to this one first because they think that you can get a lot more clicks and the most clicks possible with your daily budget. Now, they aren't too far off. Google Ads will attempt to drive the most clicks possible with your daily budget, but that doesn't really consider the quality or the relevance of the traffic, and it's not ideal for driving sales or other conversions. Maximize clicks is the best option if you have a limited budget or limited search volume for the keywords in your campaign, and you're confident that you can get really strong conversion volume, or it's a very easy to access conversion, like a very simple email lead or just a pure traffic conversion goal, then this could be the right campaign for you. Manual CPC bidding. Manual CPC bidding gives you more control of your bidding strategy. However, more control means more time spent monitoring costs and adjusting it on your own. If you're not too well versed in Google Ads yet, we don't really recommend this strategy. Manual CPC is where you set bids for different ad groups or keywords on your own. If specific search terms are more profitable than others, you can quickly adjust budgets to add or remove money from other campaigns. If you have a varied campaign with a lot of ad groups and a lot of keywords, manual CPC can get to be a lot of work. You can also end up bidding for a lot of clicks that are not likely to convert. Google has the enhanced CPC checkmark by default, so you will want to uncheck that to truly select manual CPC. You'll see a warning that the campaign may result in low performance, but if your campaign has no data to go on or a very limited budget, this can be actually the greatest option for you to get a lot of traffic and for you to drive some marginally high qualified users to wherever your destination is. Next up, we have cost per thousand impressions or CPM bidding. This is uh, pretty much just known as CPM bidding, bidding solely based on impressions. It's reserved for the display network and YouTube ads, and it's not for search. Next up, we have cost per thousand viewable impressions or vCPM, which is a tactic of manual bidding best reserved for brand awareness campaigns. It's reserved for display network and YouTube ads, and it's setting your maximum costs on viewable thousand impressions. It counts as a viewable impression after two seconds of a video ad is played on YouTube or one second of a display ad is shown on the display network. This might sound really aggressive for the display ads in particular, but an impression on Facebook is when someone views even a pixel of your ad on Facebook, so it's a little bit more generous for Google's display ads. Next up, we have cost per view bidding or CPV bidding. Cost per view bidding is strictly reserved for video advertising on Google Ads and can be used on the YouTube Ads platform. Using CPV bidding, you pay for video views or interactions. Interactions on YouTube could be any of the following, call to action clicks, overlay clicks, cards, companion banners, you name it. A view is determined by how long someone watches the video ad for, otherwise known as the duration. In this case, with CPV bidding, the view is only counted when someone watches an entire 30 seconds of your ad. If your ad is less than 30 seconds, it would be when they watch your entire ad. CPV bidding is the default bid setting for YouTube ads. For CPV bidding, you start by entering the highest bid you're willing to pay for a view or an interaction. This is known as your maximum cost per view. If you set your cost per view to 25 cents, you would pay a maximum of 25 cents when a user watches your ad or engages with your call to action. So how do you know what to set? Well, we recommend starting low, actually quite low, and then adjusting based on your results. Focus on maxing out the quality scores and the ad rank, which will drive down the cost per view on your ads, allowing you to pay less for better results. 
After that, slowly bump up your CPV to increase your reach and see where your conversion volume ends out. The last bidding option on Google Ads is the target impression share bidding. This is a new bidding strategy that was released late in 2018, and this smart bidding strategy is focused on brand awareness and helping you reach as many people as possible within the niche that you're looking at. As an example, let's say that you're looking to dominate impressions for a specific keyword search like basketball shoes. All you have to do from there is enter your goal percentage of impressions, and then keep in mind that the percentage impression share is a goal and is not just affected by your bids, but also by the quality score of each individual Google ad group and ad relating to those keywords. So even if you aim for 90% or 100%, you're unlikely to reach that goal without horribly overbidding for views and clicks. The impressions also don't guarantee that your ad is seen or click since it can also appear in a lower ad position. The target impression share is mostly an option for your branded search campaigns and a limited number of key search terms for your brand. Target search page location. This was replaced by target impression share. The other bidding option that was removed in 2019 was called target outranking share. This was another bidding strategy that was replaced by target impression share, and it used to work by adjusting your campaign bids to target a certain level of impressions. The target outranking bid share strategy used to let you try and outbid your competitors. If your ads and your competitor ads were both displaying, Google increased your bids to outrank their ads. It's no longer available though, and that's totally fine. This wasn't used by many people. So now that you know the basics of each bidding type on Google ads, where do you even start with figuring out which bidding option is best for you? Well, it all depends on your campaign goals, budget, volume, and your overarching strategy. This is something that we can help you out with on this YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to know when we release more of our videos. We're going to have a ton more videos coming out, diving in exactly into each one of these bidding strategies and when to know when they're right for you. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.